is graduation season and maybe you have a college grad who is starting a new job or a young person in your life or even just for you, understanding the importance of enjoying the day to day but also thinking about the future. Uh, Michael, local financial instructor Michael Mazer here with advice for us on retirement planning and how do you handle all that with these kids when retirement seems like a million years away? That's what's tough for younger, for new grads, people in their first job. Retirement is the last thing yeah. on their mind. Um, but really, starting early is so, so important, especially so starting out. It's tough for them because they have all these new bills. Now they're paying for the, you know, they're paying for the car, the gas, the groceries, maybe student loans, and they feel like there's just no way I can do this. Well, just starting early puts you ahead of so many other people and puts you on the right track. It really is unbelievable how much starting early can help. I mean, so if someone starts saving $5,000 a year at 25, versus at 35. Mm -hmm. So say $5,000 a year, starting at 25 versus 35. Assuming roughly 8% rate of return over time, which is, rel which is reasonable. If you start at 25, when you retire at 65, you'll have one, roughly $1.3 million. That's incredible. Mm. If you started at 35, you've got about half. $650,000. Wow. So that 10 year starting difference gives you another $650,000. That that 10 year head start, you can't catch back up if you don't start early. And that they, that's that compounding earn, uh, interest that we talk about that maybe the first decade, decade and a half, you don't see much. Exactly, you scrimp and you save and you don't go on the vacation that your friends took and you save $10,000. And the market grows 10%, which is a good year in the stock market. And your growth on $10,000 is a thousand bucks. And you're thinking, I should have taken that vacation. A thousand dollars, I sacrificed all that to make a thousand dollars. It's not fun early, but the first 10, 15 years, it'll grow, 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 and you're practicing saving. I know it sounds silly, but practicing saving really is important. Just getting used to setting that 10 to 15% aside, treat it like a bill, never touch it, try to increase it every year if you can. It's and good then habits, it's right? It's good habits. Mm -hmm. that, that latter 15 years is when the compounding takes off. So are we instructing the kids so they start a new job, we're saying get in the 401k as soon as you can, mm -hmm. right? Um, if they have a 401k, a lot of company you know, a 401k. So maybe, maybe you work for a small business that doesn't really offer that. So most companies these days do, smaller businesses, maybe it's a bit more challenging, but even for smaller businesses, it's getting more cost effective for mm -hmm. smaller businesses to offer 401ks as well. Okay. And then are you, in addition to that, are you also doing independent investing into the market, into a different mutual fund? Or so if you can save into your 401k and still save more, you're a rock star, and by all means, start saving into a Roth IRA or mm -hmm. a brokerage account, and that's on the, on the 401k side, especially for the younger kids. You're probably at the lowest pay scale point of your career. Save into the Roth side. Pay the taxes now. It'll grow tax-free. You can take it out tax-free down the road when you're in a much higher tax bracket. Mm. Um, Michael, when it comes to a percentage, and, and I think you said this number, but just to highlight it, if you're, you know, you get that first paycheck, like we said earlier, you think you're loaded. What percentage of that check should you aim to save? So ideally 15%. If we can do more, great. If we can't hit 15% out of the gates, fine. Do 2%, 3%, 8%, whatever you can do. Try to at least get the company match. That's the, the bare minimum. Try to at least get the company match. And then increase it every, increase it one or two or 3% per year automatically. Most companies offer automatic increases. So instead of you logging on, changing mm -hmm. your allocations every year, just set it to automatically increase. So if you get a 5% raise and your 401k goes up 2%, you're not even gonna feel it. How do you handle the psychology of spending with, I mean with any of us to be honest, but especially with young adults, who are looking at Instagram and who are looking Inundated to with ads. buy new wardrobes, yeah. buy the uh, new car, go on the trip. How do you manage all that desire to spend? So I think the more we can teach people to help them sort of visualize the future of, okay, I'm sacrificing today, not just because my parents told me to save 15% or because Michael told me to save 15%, but because I understand what this 15% means. This 15% means that I'm on track to retire around you know late 50s, early 60s, whatever, and have the financial freedom that's gonna be so important to me. Look around at you know parents or friends of parents or people who are retiring, if they have that financial freedom, it's life changing. Mm -hmm. And so that car you wanna buy when you're 26, because you just got a, a great new job, is it worth working 
five years longer because the savings you could have put into your 401k went to that car instead. Right. Incredible stuff. Uh, we appreciate you trying to help uh, create a conversation. A lot of this is creating a conversation on a way to think about your future, about finances. It's so important. The more education, the better. Absolutely. Good and you stuff, can uh, check out Michael and the entire team there. Visit Retirement Planning EDU. Dot org website right Great there. Great resources. Absolutely on, that on your screen. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.